So no, I don't go thin anymore. <laughs> Welcome to the <laughs> Malacracy Practice Guild, March 2023. Okay, so um, everybody, you can bring in your uh, topics to the agenda. Um, Jonah, if you have anything, um, just you know, grab a sticky. You just um, um, yeah. If you, if you can have one for me, it will be um, um, uh, smallest circle no smaller smallest circle possible smallest circle possible okay that would be jonah all right then let's start with steve linking in circles so your question thank you uh we're uh, a group of about, I guess, 10 or 12 practitioners. And needless to say, there's, you know, people filling roles in multiple roles in different circles. And so it's like, you know, what what role am I and what circle am I at any given meeting? And we wanted to get, we had recently adopted uh, the 5.0 constitution. And so things are a little bit different in terms of, of connections between circles. And I just thought I would ask this group about um, linking in circles. I think it's one, 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 three, four, something section in the Constitution, and the language is a little challenging, I think, as <laughs> as it is often in the Constitution. But um, we have a situation where there's a, a, a subcircle and a circle, a super circle, and we want to we want to link from the subcircle to the super circle so that information, some financial information can be regularly shared and available there and also, you know, make changes. And there's something about uh, the, the, the super circle or the other, the, hmm, the, the one circle inviting the other circle's participation via a policy, I think is the language. Are you, um... Are you practicing? You you practicing under V five version five? Of the... Yes. Okay. Okay. And this, so this is a new, I think, a, a new paragraph or a new section. Um, and just just wondering if anyone else has had some experience. I, I I we've interpreted it for ourselves, and we've also decided to do what we need to do and not be not be constrained by any interpretation because we need to get the information. So um, that, that yeah. was our. So the idea is to, uh, if you have a role in an, an existing role in a sub circle and you wanted to link it either you know, like sideways or upwards, uh, right. yeah. then you can, uh, yeah, you can now, if, it used to be, there used to be a concept called crosslinks in the previous right, version yeah. of the constitution that is now substituted with the possibility of actually taking the very role that you have and just yeah linking it into a different circle and it would it will take all of the all of the um, role description with it and and you can even add to it in the new circle with um mm -hmm. with adding additional accountabilities to it, which will be just local for that context, but not apply to the other circle, interestingly. So um, yeah, that's the new thing. Um, in terms of, uh, do you use a, um, what, what do you use? Do you use glass frog or do you use Hula Spirit? Or oh, glass frog, yeah. Glass frog, okay. I'm not sure exactly how it looks in glass frog, but um, in Hula Spirit there, yeah, there is this, Option now you can just drop in a drop down. It's called I think the, they call it a transversal role. Um, okay. <laughs> the concept anyway, but you can just you if you say new role, then it gives you different options, and you can pick invite a role from an existing role from a uh, from a different circle. And then oh, you, okay. Maybe Glass Frog has a similar capacity. Yeah, I, then. I guess. I guess. Yeah. And then so that. My experience is that uh, it can be useful, especially for temporary projects, let's say, uh, where you have a project circle, which would for a while need to, you know, be uh, 
yeah, where certain functions are needed that already exist in other circles, and you want to temporarily bring them together and they and have tacticals and, and and governance even, and you can just create a new uh, sub circle and then invite all those roles from other circles in into it. Mm. And have uh, have all these functions there, and then after you're done, you can just dissolve the circle again and and be done with it. So we we did this once. It was kind of useful, uh, and so this is a new flexible way of um, yeah, mapping functions differently. Okay. Uh, need it. Yeah. All right. It sounds like something we should be able to figure out then pretty well. So it, we have the basic idea correct, I think. Yeah. Can I ask something, Steve? Steve? Yeah. Steve. Um, Steve. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering, I heard that you, you, you said that the, the tension here is that you needed a specific role in a sub circle, shares information in a super circle. It, can you detail a little bit more of the what are you needing specifically to, to well choose? the 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 big circle is operations uh you know all about the day-to-day -day work and client projects and so on the um, sub circle is the people legal and um financial um circle and in that in that circle there is um i think a role called financial operator and i'm not totally conversant with all the accountabilities, but there are opportunities when it, this role, and specifically the person who's filling this role right now, um, wants to be able to share um, certain financial um, data that that role um, holds um, with the op with the uh, some other roles in the operations and you know we can just do that <laughs> but we wanted to know what the you know what the mechanism was and 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 to deepen our understanding of the of the structure yeah, I mean, as we go you may not even i mean it, it may be convenient to ha invite the role so that you can actually uh yeah you can join the tactical meetings and even governance meetings right right um and to but, be present so that you can take actions and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, another uh, variant uh, would be, yeah, you don't need to invite them into the circle. Any role can work with any other role uh, throughout the organization. So the direct path is always uh, available. It doesn't necessarily need to be mapped into um, a linked role or, or that. Okay. Um, just yeah, you know, but for convenience sake, it might be it might be a good idea to because you say yeah. okay, you have to get the invitations uh, to to the tactical meetings, and that's the synchronization point that's most convenient for right, right. members. Cool, and you can do that. And so the the mechanism I believe is for the 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 receiving circle to create a policy. I think that's the language, and I'm yeah, I'm policy, not totally clear on that, but. So creates a policy for inviting this role. Yeah, basically, it's, it's you know because it's uh, saying we allow this role to take part in in our circle meetings because that's uh, the policy has two functions: either to restrict access, which is like ninety five percent of the cases, and then yeah. five percent of the cases it's like no, it's the other way. Something is restricted. And we grant access, uh, and we make an exception. And this is one one example of how you would uh, make an exception. Although, if I remember from my practical, um, yeah, from from practical experience, we I think we didn't create a <laughs> we didn't create a policy. It was somehow. Let me see. Oh, yeah, you just posted this. Right. That's the section. Yeah invites it yeah well what is an invitation or is it hmm. you know it, it continues i just didn't want to bomber to, to bomb you with all the article oh okay la, 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 la. may add to the role and, mm -hmm. uh, and it goes on yeah. but <laughs> the, let's see okay uh, uh, but does it say uh, there's a policy needed? I don't see it here in this. Yeah, if a policy mm. of that other circle of any other super circle there of invites it. Let's, let's first ah, go. okay, 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 cool. Yeah, the very big. Yeah, there you have it. Cool. And yeah. so, what what is it that makes that 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 role 
jump from this circle to that circle. <laughs> Is that jump? Glass uh, frog does that. Glass frog basically, uh, okay. I guess, copies the content of one role to the other circle. And okay, we'll we'll play with that. We'll yeah. link it, link data into it. Yes, yeah. And another, another idea, maybe just for you to consider if, if most of the time what I've seen in uh, aquatic organizations that finances mostly are based on the one of the biggest circle because most of them are that, that work is transversal to the whole organization. So sometimes it's easier. Um, this is just a thought that doesn't have to apply to your organization. Yeah. It's just hearing um, all the stuff that, that happens that it already I think we. We, we we talked about that the other day and and wondered that if we if we took this main finance role out of the people finance and legal circle it would no longer be the pfl it would just be the pl um so we just were you know playing with those things so we see i think we want to experiment with this so that we can you know develop some some skill with it and uh, be confident that we're doing it the right way. So I appreciate all your clarifications. Yeah. And you could also you could also locate the, the role in the, in, the, in the broader circle and then link into the sub circle. <laughs> ah, okay. You know, maybe that's a more logical way of doing it. Uh, oh, I like that were, flip. I hadn't. Yeah, that's great. Depending on where the role resides, mostly or where it's most yeah. useful. So what what do you have to think is like what is the what is the connection point? So, so where the communication pathways, how can we make it most convenient? Where is the most coherence with the other functions? Like uh, that, that, yeah, and you can play with that and see where it fits best, right? As long right, as you have attention. You. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I'm happy about that. Okay. Okay, did you get what you need for now? I have what I need. Thank you everyone so much. And so it's, Go to Holacacy for all, Keith. What do you need? Holacacy for all. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. thanks. Uh, unlike all of you, uh, I'm still not a, a practice of, I mean, still haven't practiced Holacacy yet. Uh, but through all my readings, I do have one feeling that Holacacy may not be suitable for everybody. It may be suitable for certain people only. Uh, but I'm not sure this thing is correct or not. So we just want to understand from your experience, is everybody suitable for this kind of system or is only certain type of people? <laughs> well, yeah, well, kind of people. So you need to be at least be able to adhere to and understand rules and follow rules. You know, if you don't follow rules, you're not made for holacracy. <laughs> <All right. laughs> if you're a rebel and you have to always Break the rules. Uh, I mean, there's a way to break the rules without breaking them in Alaxi with this individual individual initiative. But um, technically, it's not breaking any rule because you are still within the uh, confines of the um, um, constitution. Um, so, other types of people. It's, so it's. I mean, it's 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 a bit complex, you know. It's a bit complicated. There's a lot of moving parts in holacracy, and it can be disorienting at times uh, because the, sh the ground literally shifts under your feet, you know, when governance happens and your role gets erased and so on. So it may not be for everyone's, may not be everybody's cup of tea. Um, and I think maybe certain people who prefer stability and who prefer people telling them what to do may sometimes feel lost in such a system, maybe a little overwhelmed. Um, but then you could also play holacracy in a different way. So you could say, okay, you don't have to in help innovate the structure. I mean, you you people who feel like you need to be told what to do. You can also just fill your role, do your the duties of your role. And um, we can ask projects of you if you, you're not there to give yourself projects. Cool, we can <laughs> re request them from you. So you can the theoretically play that this way, but it's not, not a great match, I would say. So ideally you would have to, uh, if you look at you know, these um, value systems, levels, perspectives, uh, if you know, if you 
no lalu or or yeah spiral dynamics um you see like orange would be i mean orange is a good that's where it starts get, getting interesting and you can play the blue i think but it's not great um so yeah i think every level can find something about holacracy which it likes but then other aspects which it doesn't like so much but that's true for types also different types of people typologies um you can look at you know let's say the model like the enneagram and look at the holacracy and and then you for every type you find something which the type likes about it and does not like it. so it's it's because it's so balanced that everybody will find something to hate about it <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah. um yeah yeah no and i would like to add that there, there's there's never a universal universal type of uh you know working paradigm that's going to be prevalent and everybody's going to be happy with that so i adhere with what uh what dennis is saying and it's also also going to vary how they are exposed to holacracy and how is that they start their journey uh how much frustration can they take and how can you um try to make it easier for them for people who are who is not a nerd in organizational design do you have a big chance that they're going to feel a lot of frustration because it, most of the time it's just in the way of the, of the work until you understand that this is not a universe. Um, so the way that you are exposed to that and how you start to integrate in that to your everyday work, uh, in my experience, changed a lot on the type of uh, uh, opinion that you're going to build in your head about holacracy. Um, and I have done it myself. Uh, trying to DIY uh, an implementation and failed. Tried uh, accessing a coach for you know one or two times and it didn't work either. Uh, so it, it seriously changes, in my opinion, in my experience at least, um, how you try to expose people. To it. I, th I think it can be an interesting um, conversation with with uh, folks, people who are maybe reluctant. To think about the you know the traditional organizations that they have worked in without ever really questioning the structure and you know those organizations there's there's just as many rules but most of them are not explicit uh, we just grow into them you know for over 10 or 20 or 30 years and we don't question it it's just like this is how it is of course so you go from you know corporation to corporation and it's the same and so we figured you know, this is how we do it. So sometimes looking at it, you know, kind of from a, a system structure perspective can can open some eyes. <laughs> yeah, true. Very good. Yeah, I think it's really depends on can we can you make it um, uh, plausible for the person how how the how the system helps them doing their job and processing the tensions. I think that's crucial. So if the basic willingness is there to experiment with it and to be open to trying it, mm -hmm. I think that's then I think it can go a long way because it's like I see it's very practical if you think about it. Mm -hmm. You have a tension, you throw it in and see what happens. You know, I mean, people ask you helpful questions like what do you need? <laughs> yeah. And uh, and stuff like that. And and they even help you uh, craft a proposal and governance, even if you only have your attention and you don't know what to do about it. And, okay, let's uh, let's see what we could do. And then um, it always checks back in with you and see oh, this, this, this solve your tension and you can feel it or you feel, you know, it does help me or it doesn't help me. And I think a lot of the resistance is just, um, yeah, I think it's the, what, what Stephen said is like, we, we take this other way of doing things so, so for granted, we soak it in with our mother's milk somehow. And it's kind of this all pervading default that, uh, that we don't even consider that things could go differently. And then we're, we're um yeah we prefer the familiar misery <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly because that's what we know and that mm -hmm. feels, feels comfy somehow and and Polacacy can feel scary and out there and oh my god now i have to take over i have to leave this role and, and somebody 
and somebody scold me when I do something wrong and, and so on. So am I being blamed afterwards? Uh, and I want to stick my neck out and then others on the other side of the street is like, oh, can I trust this this guy to to fill his role? I, I should, you know, should be able to, you know, uh, take over the steering wheel <laughs> whenever I think it makes sense, you know, and all this, this, this is the old dynamic is just comes. To, but in general, I think if you have are open to it and and you have good guidance and competent guidance, I think yeah, I think I think is very important mm -hmm. and role models who, who you just show you how it's done like this is how we do things around here and they're competent in it then i think you can pick it up and learn it it's not it's not magic or something like that it's just yeah. different nice yeah yeah thank Did you I, I do it for you anything else to add jonah or um no i think you, you you're spot on with this and um uh, no i don't have anything else cool yeah Thank you so much. Boys, let's take Jonah here, a small circle possible. One person. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And maybe to give a little bit more context, it's organization wise. Um, okay. How many people does it make sense to convey into something like holacracy? If, if you're two, three people, does it make sense? Doesn't make sense. I don't. I know the answer. I just. I just. I have an answer. I don't know the answer. I have one answer, but I'm curious to to hear what you have to say about this. Um, and mainly linked to the fact that um, when you are in a small group, sometimes working uh, every time with the role, um, bringing up the role that you're referring to and from the room that you're talking. Uh, sometimes it could be really, you know, redundant when you know, you know, there are two, three people, and you know, what everybody's doing. Um, and yeah, so that's the first part. Yeah, how, what, what's in your experience? When does it make sense? Um, in which scale of the company makes sense to adapt holacracy, or uh, how to adapt maybe in some articles of the group? Yeah, I think. Um... So two people is like almost overkill. Like, why, why bother, right? With three people, okay, maybe it starts get interesting. And uh, but what it always helps with is um, making explicit the recurring activities of of the work. What is the work? Is the question, and not so much who is the person who's doing it. And yeah, we, we will be it will be over determined in many cases. Like, okay. Jonah is in this role and that role and the other role and every, everything is Jonah. <laughs> All the roles are Jonah or whatever. And you kind of, uh, yeah, in that context, I think it's understandable why people say, okay, the, what's the extra value of the role description for me now in everyday work? I, it feels more like in the way that, uh, than, than uh, adding value. But uh, I think at like three, four people, it, it slowly flips and it can become very valuable but it will be valuable either way i think in a way that it uh that you document what the recurring activities is along the way so that when you grow into a size that is a little more complex because of the number of nodes in the system which you know if you add a node then you add like five more connections and 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 everybody talks to everyone so you have this some point it just it's it's kind of this um this explosion this this, this curve just goes up a number of connections so that's the complexity of the communication and so and then if you don't, do you have a role structure in the background i think that that's useful but i can yeah. see cases where yeah like two three people where you say okay i know what you're doing you know what i'm doing and i we, we kind of feel what we can count on with each other. We feel that. We don't need an external brain to capture that. We feel that we don't yeah. need. It. But and, and certainly, and at some point, those implicit expectations, you know, you run against the wall. I think uh, you, you, you come to the end of it and then you think, okay, no, let's actually check what is it actually that we agreed upon and did we agree upon it or not and, and, and get out of this, you know, quick and dirty realm, which is good. 
for for if it's quick and dirty needs to be quick and dirty great and you can you know i can count on you doing this this kind of stuff somehow i feel it what it is but i i wouldn't be able to spell it out right so. and th this is this is good and uh and then i was thinking that sometimes it's just about being aware of when i have a dissonance in my head about the request that i'm receiving so you, you don't have to be uh, go. You don't need to go all the way with the formality and say like, "Hey, Dennis, in your marketing role, I want to ask you for a project from my finance role." Um, so we can. Uh, you don't have to go that formal, but it's it's interesting to keep in mind the awareness of, okay, I don't. For example, you come in and say like, "Hey, can you go and wash my car?" <laughs> it's like. What? Okay, this this is this sounds weird. Why, why are you asking me? You know, I don't have a role. Then I go and check, and the fact that we keep it clean and updated, in my head at least, makes it easier to check if the, the expectations are are on spot, right? And even if you want to professionalize your company, and if you go to ISO certifications or anything, you need to have everything already written down. So it's also a step forward. So it's that. So it, it doesn't doesn't harm. Uh, you don't need to go formal all the way, but yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot about it, uh, and it's like parallel to the question of how many um, how many accountabilities should you have on a roll, you know? <laughs> because that's also a question. Should you spell out everything? No, <laughs> no. Just please don't, you know, because that that imp you have the purpose. The purpose is vague enough that it informs you. And you say, okay, this kind of direction this person has to run into, and, and that's that's what they care about, and that's enough to know and need to know. But if you then, to the degree that this, that this this is not enough, this will arise as a tension, and then you process that tension, and then you add that extra clarity, but not before, because if you do that before you. You, you are, people get under the impression that they have to spell it out for everything. And then you, uh, you have books written about Holacracy, like this one, it's, it just came out as a German book, uh, which, which, which criticizes um, uh, unintentional bureaucratization. <laughs> Interesting, huh? So the argument goes like, uh, everything's formalized on Holacracy, Everything, every little step is being tried they try to, this madness, like they try to spell it all out. No, we're not. This is a bad understanding of holacracy. And if they research organizations that did this, then they just simply have crappy practice. That's what my opinion, where, where the misunderstanding is we have to spell out everything. And uh, no, I would say you spell it out to the degree that you have an unclarity and you need, need clarity on a certain issue, punctual. Yeah. Like uh, on, on that point, okay, spell that point out, but not more. Minimally sufficient is my mantra when it comes to governance. Not like, uh, yeah, this. And also, don't just add to the governance. At some point, come into the habit of questioning governance, questioning the validity of role, propose to erase it, see if any objection <laughs> comes up at all <laughs> if no objection comes up maybe we don't need it anymore you know because people uh, in the beginning we, we we add we add we add and then the thing grows of course but no if nobody is trying to make it essential in essence being like yeah i, I just my my uh my reference point here is tom at, at encode you know tom as as a circle lead always had an eye for uh unnecessary fluff and simplification and that's kind of you know my role model for uh governance not just adding but also taking away minimizing questioning uh and making that attention hey why is this role dead for two years and nobody's ever doing work on this role do we actually need this thing clock our governance records why no Anyway, what did you say, Jordan? No, he he likes to call it trim and prune. I think uh, or something. Trim and, 
Thank, that's that's the that's the wording. Yeah, through improve. So I, I I like to think of uh, uh, that as gardening. Yeah, gardening uh, exactly. The, so the the circle lead also the the image is not from gen so my image is from general to gardener so I'm not a you know I'm not so as a gardener I, I create the conditions and so on for, for the healthy soil for emergence right for for and I try to mix it up and I try to uh, invite all the species and the different plants and that uh, have diversity in in my circle diversity of perspectives of types of you know uh, and and maybe take throw somebody else into a role mix it up uh, and and see what it does and uh, that's kind of like turning over the soil like and then you know and then the the trimming and pruning is exactly like in the garden like this dead bushes you know just trim and prune the bushes and and get you know get rid of the of the stuff so that new new plants can grow and and, and flourish right and we we have the essential stuff there, not not old dead dead wood. Um, you said something that was uh, kind of a triggering uh, a memory in my head. Um, the first time that we tried to implement holacracy by by ourselves in Bike Buenos Aires, is a bike fruit company in Argentina, Buenos Aires. Uh, basically, what happened is that we had our role that we called the hub the the hub of facilitation. So it was basically a receptionist. And I remember that there was a need for, for them to clarify everything that they were doing. Kind of, uh, they wanted to add the manual uh, into the company. But here, here's the thing, this, this is the, the reasoning that they, that they used. It was, it was about a bad understanding of holacracy, which was, if it's not there, you cannot ask me to do stuff, which was again, kind of uh, something that when you jump from a traditional job description, where you have to do what there's there and whatever is not there you're not meant to do to something that it's okay wh why you know why we're we here we have a purpose to work upon in your circle and the company and your roles whatever gets compliant thing again yeah, yeah. Totally. No, it's uh, the people don't get the flip of I, I always call it an inversion of the authority structure it gets yes. inverted it's just like turned to the left everything that uh so so you are allowed to do everything that is not explicitly forbidden versus I have to ask for, for if I want to do move a finger and do anything, I have first get permission. No, it's the other way around. So you say, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. No, you don't. You don't fucking get it. You, you get it here, but you don't get it here. You, you, are, you have it is still saying. So that, that's why these lists of accountabilities, so people under, misunderstand accountabilities if it's not my accountabilities, I cannot do it. No, it's bullshit. You can act out of the purpose. And the purpose is always kind of this, this implicit authorization that you, for all the things that are useful and meaningful to do, you already are authorized to do the useful and meaningful thing for your role. You already are. And those other things are just actually, you don't need them. Other roles need accountabilities on your role, not you. You don't need them. Technically, you could just act out of your purpose. I mean, they may be useful to remind you what specific duties can be you want to expect from yourself, maybe also in that role. But uh, it's, they're mainly for others to, to add to your list because they have specific tensions they want to solve with regard to you and your role. And uh, that's how ideally they come to be as, yeah. as requests from the outside of the role. And then, and then there's another part of this, which is uh, some people just feel that there's too much, uh, and why should they do it? You know, when they're still jumping out of a regular job, where you know it's most of the time a competition uh, between the company and the employee, where a company tries to fuck up the, the employee as much as they can for as little as they can pay, to somewhere where you know it's not supposed to be like that, but. This maybe it's going to take me to the to the next item, and, and I can stop here. But just thinking about how is it making sense for that person to own the the, the role, to become the CEO of the role, if there's the, the on the other hand there's no alignment in the purpose, there is no proper compensation when you're being treated like shit. So it's not just about holacracy as the rule said. It's how you prepare the people, 
how to prepare the context as a yeah. gardener, like you said. Yes, and 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 the whole context of an organizations that are interested in holacracy are use are usually they have a different view of the human being. You know, the so theory. You know, McGregor theory X theory Y maybe. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the they think of them theory why so in a sense that yeah you do you are motivated and we treat you as such and if we if we don't think that then we wouldn't ever give think about giving you a role and let you do stuff in that role out of your mm -hmm. own volition you know that would be too dangerous I would, we want control and we mm -hmm. want that's why we need management you know we don't need self-organization holacracy we don't trust you then it's no don't do it if you don't trust your people don't do holacracy yeah <laughs> it's been, be dangerous. True, but, but but again, trust is also something that goes two ways, right? So how do you, how do you create the conditions for people to be self-empowered? Uh, and it's it's a lot more complex than just giving them the, the and the, the, Christiana has something really good that I really like about the differentiate the difference between um, distributed authority and distributed uh, power or something like that. So oh, power yeah, and distributed uh, authority. Uh, yeah, you, you may you may still feel like cautious about using that freedom that is offered to you because if you actually do, and there is still employer-employee relationship, and you do something which is not wanted or not, you know, preferred, and and you just do it and you 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 play by the relaxy rules when you still get a slap on your hand, so to speak, you know talking about compensation or you know uh, this is just a, this is just a, a still a hidden power structure that is overriding what the intention of the model is in this case so and it's corrupting the practice obviously so the ideal thing would be for the owner to be fully you know enlightened about holacracy and fully you know dedicated to being held and to the rules not overstepping the rules but that's the psychological property that you, you cannot influence necessarily from the outside that is either is there or isn't there and if it isn't there it's unsafe for somebody in the organizations to to uh, to use their, uh, the freedoms granted to them by the constitution it's unsafe right. because if you do and then you get thrown out and you say great holacracy it's, it's great but you know uh, uh, let's be real. I think that, right. yeah, yeah, and and you have vast experience on this, and I'm just starting to have experience on this uh, approaching customers and uh, potential organizations that want to implement holacracy. But my thinking it's becoming stronger and stronger in the sense that I wouldn't. There's a problem, many problems. That holacracy is complicated enough by itself to implement, uh, but to make it not a, the last trend that you know the founder wants to um, try out because you know they want to tempt new employees to come in or they want to to you know to show themselves as they are modern and agile and whatever bullshit it is, and they still don't want to let go of power and they just bring in holacracy. It's going to be complicated enough that if you don't bring to the table all the other things that you need to have in place, the people context, the compensation, and, and at least awareness of what needs to change. It's like, we're never going to implement anything anywhere in the world, <laughs> but it's true. You know, you have to start somewhere. It's an right? uphill battle. And, and yeah. I think, and holacracy is the first kind of wedge into that whole thing, you know, because it's, yeah. it's, it's okay. You want to, you want to be agile and everything. It is possible. Yeah. If you only were willing to commit, and it mirrors that back to you like uh, like nothing else, it mirrors back to where your ego wants to, you know, step over the rules, and you know, uh, you as a leader want to do your own thing, and versus you know, complying with uh, with what you said you you know you promised you were going to be bound by this, or you want to bind yourself to it, and then you're not doing it. That's all. You know, if you are able to, then it's, uh, yeah, then the chances are much bigger that it will stick if you really get it. But that's that's a values thing. You have to 
value holacracy for its capacity to frustrate you. <laughs> you have to value that, right? You say it's a good thing that I don't get what I need, that I don't get what I want, what my ego wants, because it's not about my ego, it's about the purpose of the organization that I am serving and not the other, the other way around. The ego, uh, the, the organization is not serving my personal whims and wishes. Yeah. Stephen, thanks for uh, being here and bringing your stuff. So it was great having you. So see you next time around, hopefully. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, Bye. yeah, I think that's the challenge that it holds up a mirror and then it, 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 it like, you know, like with ENCODE uh, and all that, that it, Holacracy is the conversation starter that brings into awareness the other topics of, okay, and, Right. You no, know, the, the work is difficult enough, but what about all the people context and then the uh, legal context? Uh, that's a whole other uh, discussion, but without Biloxi, it would have not have been possible to address it that way as, as we try to, at least. Uh, and I think we're going to eventually uh, figure yeah. this out, how this works, but it's a, it's a, first, a first necessary step. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it invites the conversation, as you say. You know, so if you cannot you cannot swallow the whole thing, the new paradigm at once in, in a single bite. So you need to start somewhere, nibbling somewhere, and then maybe you want to eat it the whole the whole stuff, but you're yeah. not gonna have enough mouth to chew it all together at once. Yeah, and there's a there's a there's an interesting book title a book out. I haven't read it, but it says "New Work Needs Inner Work." Uh, new work needs inner work needs inner work so you know you start out as a founder and you say okay let's do new work and then it's uh when you do something like holacracy it it just it, it's in your face that you actually need to work on yourself to live up to that value that you you know want to prescribe everyone in a company to follow but you're you yourself are not maybe not yet up to but you aspire to but you still have your ego things going on and it's it can be I think can be really challenging to really face that and say okay yes I actually I would like to profit from this you know unduly from this from my company and I do think I own this thing and I think people uh, everything is mine and and I don't feel it's it's a living being and its own right uh, yet you know I think still it's my baby. And and I want to have yeah I worked hard for it so let me take all the profits and and you know you want to take advantage of this thing I you know I totally get it uh, and it's your organization it's your organization right but if you really are true to spiritual legacy I don't think you can really say it's my organization really what does that mean you know you own yeah you own assets okay. But do you own the people that work in there? Do you own the wiz the I don't know, the knowledge and everything that's distributed across people? Do you really own that? I don't know. So it's the ownership thing is also interesting. Yeah. Uh, real. If we would only have a framework that just differentiated all these contexts, then yeah, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Many years later. If only, if only, yeah, yeah. Only, got only. there. That would be, um, yeah. Yeah, right. maybe it's possible. I think it's, uh, the, the problem is uh, that, that this is light years ahead of uh, where most organizations are. That's the problem. It's not that it's not, Herlaxi is, is, is in itself makes sense. And I think the for purpose enterprise also a thing in itself and it makes sense. And, um, but it's just too far out there yet for most people to wrap their head around and it's too far away from what they're, what they're used to. True. Yeah, true. it seems, looks, looks like the seed, it's taking, it's, it's going to take a long time to grow. Kind of those uh, bamboos or kind of flowers that take 10 years to bloom, you know, and all of a sudden 10 years after, it's going to be more than 10 years, but uh, yeah. this type of uh, specimen that, that just takes a lot to 
Yeah. Yeah. Someone just stole your laptop in the back. I know. <laughs> Son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the top, um, so it's cool. Yeah, I see. How frustrated out for him. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really curious. I mean, this has been around for 15 years, so it's doesn't seem to just die out and go away. So uh, chances are it will be around for, you know, the Lindy effect. <laughs> if, uh, it will be around for another 15 years and see where it is then and and, and how, how normal it is by then. So if you think about, I always try to compare it to um, agile in software development because that was a freak approach, you know, 20 years ago. It was not so... Uh, you know, well known, and it was just weird to do it that way. You had the waterfall method and so on, but now it's common sense. Like everybody's, you're sure, you, you know, you, we don't do it the other way, the other way around uh, anymore, and and it's uh, it is totally <laughs> taking over the current model. So I think there has to be a saturation point, and it may flip, or maybe not. You know, maybe we'll have forever have, you know, top down management around, but. I bet holacracy will be uh, and such models will be part of the mix, at least uh, of the palette of uh, that you can use to. Uh, and some organizations will always want to do that, uh, so I'm not worried. Yeah, I, I think well, agile is a bit different. Uh, in, in a way that agile is not only a practice. Uh, I feel there's a lot of people. Uh, got exposed to agile is because it was taught in the school as well. So uh, education, uh, like important journal, they try to promote, oh, you should go to agile. You want people like me, we are, I'm not from the software uh, development part. I, I'm also exp uh, exposed to agile because of the education. So I think for holacracy, very special operating model like this, if it's not starting from a very early stage, when you come to the working area, people are already familiar with those standard the working environments, and now we need to change. So that's why we feel all this resistance and hurdles. But if we start from the very beginnings, people you know, very fresh, white people, uh, very young age exposed to holacracy, then they may start to question, oh, this could be the normal way and why those adult old people having the standard ways is, is like this, then they may think that holacracy is actually the common way. So mm. I, I think uh, as compared to agile, agile started from very young age. I'm not sure who is the one promote it, but we exposed to this in the education level, but holacracy is totally different. It starts as a practice trying to ask people to practice it while the people is already have some frustrations or, or I, I don't want this, I, I want something different. Then only they're exposed to that. I, I think uh, that could be one of the reasons. Yeah. Also by some opinion. Yeah, yeah I think um, what, I, what I find always interesting or um, when I meet young people who pick up holacracy, which is great, you know, in organizations where we do implementations, uh, there were young people, they just get it. And it's just like stuck like this for because they haven't don't have uh, much to unlearn. So um, mm -hmm. they just pick it up as a normal way. Boy, do we spoil them, you know, for the for the bigger work market <laughs> because you know, they will never be able to be happy in a in a conventional organization. I figure because I wouldn't be at least. Uh, maybe maybe it's not true, but well, I I wouldn't want to go back in that sense. So it's it's um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, we see where it goes uh, over the coming years. So, you know, you know that, um, yeah. Uh, uh, want to add something? Yeah, well, I, I have the, the chance to become a teacher in one of the biggest universities, private universities in, in, in Argentina, uh, the next semester, uh, with the focus on self organization and, and maybe exposing people to this new paradigms. I'm not saying whole office because they, they're going to ask me to, to pay for them. So I'm not going to be, well, I'm not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> um, no, but seriously, uh, I, I, I really resonate with that. It's, it's about exposing young people uh, to this type of new ways of thinking work and doing work. So we unnaturalize the fact that you're going to drop from college straight to a top-down management 
hierarchy uh, job, you know, and 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 to to make them more aware that they can choose that there's something more out there, and yeah. in the end, they also needs to resonate with whatever they have uh, as their. I would say uh, the, the, how they conceive life. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to be a child? And then, and then, and, you know, in my work, I kind of take a, a bathroom break without asking for authorization. I have to work my birthday day if I want to to do so, and you know, stuff like that. And um, and I think it's about changing generations that will make a big difference for holacracy. Expanding. No, the, the stuff that is true for the knowledge quest is um, you always say. You know, changing paradigms and and science. It's like uh, science progresses funeral by funeral. So the old the old uh, the old paradigm uh, proponents have to just die out, and they will eventually, and will be superseded by new generations who do will do things differently because they have. You know, the good thing about yeah, uh, young people is yeah, they don't have to unlearn shit. So if you they learn good stuff, then. Um, you know, it's not so difficult and they pick it up quickly and it's like a first, make that their first work language. We should, uh, right? Like so it. make Colacacy your first native language. I think it's it's in a way like that. If you have to learn a second language, yeah, it's like that for older folks. They have to learn the second work language. And I should, I should write an article about this. This is, this is, a, this is a good this is a good picture. <laughs> anyway, sounds good. So, Jonah, did you get what you need for now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the, the compensation topic is that still? Did we cover this, or is it? What's uh, what's there? Um, yeah, I think I think that we that kind of we covered it. It was more going a little bit deeper into you know different ways to compensate. Uh, people, you know, and the, you have the badges, and then you have the earnings plan, and you have different ways. But I think I'm going to skip it for now. Okay. Yeah, I have, I have a topic. Um, yeah, it's just uh, just because it, I just got my hands on it today. It's um, a book that actually talks about holacracy. Again, Stefan Kuhl. He's a he's a professor. He, uh, at the university where of Bielefeld, I believe, where a um, uh, famous sociologist uh, Niklas Luhmann actually uh, taught. I don't know if you know Luhmann sy systems theory, etc. So he's kind of in that tradition and um, an organizational sociologist, and they researched um, holacracy. And now he brought out he brought out this book, and uh, yeah. Ad, uh, shadow organization it's called <laughs> agile management and unwanted bureaucratization so apparently what they found in the organizations they researched which you know i i don't know who implemented luckacy there or they self-implemented or you know who taught them but apparently yeah there you have he they observed phenomena like um people um basically uh, yeah overdoing the role uh, descriptions for example and trying to formalize everything you know which is just is shoddy practice in my opinion and then now they overgeneralize it and say okay that's holacracy if that's holacracy that's kind of like bureaucracy on steroids and and it's not fulfilling the promise of overcoming bureaucracy uh, <laughs> and yeah, I don't know what what else is going on in these organizations, but I yeah, it's I I wanna I'm very curious. Uh, this book arrived today. I'm I'm being quoted in there, so I'm very, I mean, I'm even in the literary. My my essays are in there, so um, I'm very curious. So, what they say, I haven't read oh. it yet. So, um, what about putting together a book to debunk all this bullshit that it's out there? I mean, we were too passive for that. I know that yeah, there's well, some people Yeah, totally. I mean, the, idea. The, thing, the thing is, um, so I, 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 I wrote when it was clear they're they're researching Rolakasi, They already started publishing a few of these articles. They they uh, 
uh, put out and I already replied to three of those articles and th uh, wrote like three like debunking certain misunderstandings you know what they don't have is the practitioner's perspective that's the problem uh and interestingly they say okay um and they quote me there <laughs> uh in the sense that, that I criticize them for you know not having a mature practitioner perspective and how could they how would they if they don't practice they don't know that for example formalizing everything is just stupid it is not what we do in holacracy or it's not mature practice but if you then take immature practice and then you criticize that as as the stupidity of the model then you just build a straw man and beat it up badly and that's straw manning it's as an approach and you know it's 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 hot i'm i'm annoyed by that and uh because i you know it's easy to easier to tear some, something down than to build something up and i actually asked him like how do you organize yourself uh, let me hear your better approach you know i'm all ears i want to know but that's not you know this is not it's not his business i mean he's he's just an observer and you know and he can criticize from the outside which is valuable it's not to i'm not i'm not saying he shouldn't do that and, and as a sociologist um i think it's a valid perspective to take the outside perspective but it actually is also not the inside perspective and that is not you know it's just not so uh, it certainly does not see certain aspects of the practice but you you know, as, and on the other hand, you do see uh, certain aspects of uh, holacracy. If you're not identified with the practice, then yeah, of course, you, you notice other things because you're not like trying to defend it or anything. You just have a look at it from the outside. That's that's valid. Uh, it's, it's valuable. So we want both, I would think. But what you're totally not getting here is, you know, why would any company even bother doing that? What, because apparently a lot of companies do. And they find it valuable. So, and no word on that. And so far as, as all the publications I have read, and that's what I what I criticize, where I where I feel it's unfair, because you know it's not not a um, balanced representation, uh, because mm -hmm. you know why would companies go uh, do? They're not just all naive and stupid, and not as wise as Mr. Professor. That's not the problem here. And uh, it's <laughs> anyway, so yeah, just my little rant here. I just needed to vent here a little bit, but I'm a little bit frustrated because I worked, I worked for with Holaxi and building the community for, for years. And then somebody comes along and just trashes everything. And, you know, everything, you know, if you feel very smart, if you're the debunker, you know, I'm the debunk, I'm debunking Holaxi and you feel very great about yourself. And that's, that's, ah. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's it's just frustrating as hell. Anyway, just wanted to get that off my chest. Yeah, but I mean, so. <laughs> let's, let's 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 counter. Let's do a counteroffensive, man. Let's, let's you know the best counteroffensive. I mean, what what he's effectively saying is, ah, uh, holacracy is is kind of dead in the water. Like it's not going to be. Oh, let's research. Let's be quick. Let's be quick with researching it because it won't be long uh, around any longer for for long. So that's kind of his perspective on the, the whole movement. And, you know, to, I, we should, uh, the best reply in my opinion would be not to, to be upset like I am now, but to just keep on working and just demonstrating that a lot of companies uh, do just do it. And they, they're not just, they like it and they are successful with it. That's, that's a bit, the best rebuke actually, that practitioners mm -hmm. don't care about this theoretical thing if that mm -hmm. works for them and uh, and the results are in then it's good for them great i think i i, I think it's, it's a good point and I, I obviously this you're you're reacting from the first um you know thing coming to mind and it's probably ego um you know in the way of hey how can you say this about this thing that i like so much that i, I care about so much <laughs> Of course, there, there's a lot of feelings involved, but eventually it will become sure. rational again. But yeah. what I'm saying here is that I, I agree with maybe it's not about debunking the debunker, but maybe to, to throw in some more information about actual practitioners and to provide this insightful practitioner's uh, point of view on how it actually works and maybe cite them on how they 
this they are misunderstanding this you know so yeah, yeah that i've might... been trying that with the with the article with my articles saying say this point it's just a pure misunderstanding that point is a misunderstanding this is an exaggeration and so on and so forth so i try to really tease apart like okay but also okay what is valid criticism what is like okay fair like there are maybe there are like power structures certain shadow power structures may always be a problem and will never be fully go away i mean we mm -hmm. can counter that as <laughs> it's pretty realistic and so let's not you know be naive ourselves you know and and uh talk ourselves into a perfect world uh so mm -hmm. it doesn't solve every problem you know it's like that but it's very useful and to uh trash that without at least also mentioning that it's also useful and what mm -hmm. it is useful for and what people experience it as being useful for and how it does also feel good not just crappy and shadowy and over bureaucratized and whatever the, you know license uh the licensing models i think is also criticized etc like oh this. wow yeah, yeah yeah i'm sure everything so there's no any proposal just exactly. pick, pick pick all the bad you know just find all the bad stuff about it and and assemble oh, wow. or, or or that's just my 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 sense of how this was being compiled so it's like it's really sad and he says speech is cheap yeah i don't know i don't we we'll, we we'll see i i'm curious to see going forward uh, how open they are to engage in actually a discussion. So they, on social media, they said, uh, yes, uh, we invite, uh, um, you know, content or, or your opinion, or this is just an interpretation of how we could interpret this thing called Akasi. Uh, but, you know, they tr try to claim uh, superiority in the uh, meaning making of it. That's pretty clear for me. Um, and we, we shouldn't just let them have it. That's my opinion. Just at least say, okay, we can also see it like this and to put it next to it to not just have it un un uh you know unanswered that's yeah I mean, that people make up their own minds about it right. but also here 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 the the uh yeah practitioners and here the companies that are doing it and maybe are enjoying it even you know radical idea anyway so yeah. that's my little rant that's all i got so I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. It's good. It's good. Nice. All right, guys. Ah. Shall we? Uh, do you have any other thing, or shall we give it a wrap? I'm good. Good. Then let's uh, do a chicken round. No, uh, a <laughs> chicken round. Check out now. <laughs> check out rounds. Jonah. How do you uh, leave this? Yeah, cool. It's always a pleasure to to bring in and discuss this openly. It's also helping me kind of uh, establish some some of the notions that I have and challenge some others. But I don't know. I, I really like to you know to be sharing space with mind like people, like minded people. So yeah, thank you. Keith. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, always look forward to this monthly call. Uh, so I know what's happening outside and, and and only now I know someone will so free and publish a book and just criticize people. I, I can't imagine it. Uh, well, uh, I, I learned. Uh, now I see so many different opinions outside, but I, I feel uh, in this call, you also helped me clear my doubt uh, for the question about is holocracy for everybody? Uh, what, what, could, what should be done correctly? Uh, I'm happy to be here and very happy talking to you. Hmm. Yeah, thank you all guys. Um, yeah, also great for me always to engage with the questions in this group and, and also refine my own thinking about it and find a sense of community, um, you know, with all those who have drunk the Kool-Aid, you know, all those, <laughs> the cult members gathering here um of the true believers of holacracy uh so to speak <laughs> um yeah but yeah and it's it's uh something i i do have 
faith in, I believe in, I feel is good for the world and I want to help bring into the world. So I'm not, this is, this is not going away for me. So whatever. We have a saying in German, uh, what does the oak care of the sow rubs itself on it, the, the pig? You know, the oak doesn't care. <laughs> so I hope, I hope that's, I like the image. I hope that's what we Interesting. Were. So, yeah. Oh. And that's Alrighty. it. Oink, oink. Oink, oink. Oink, oink. oink, oink. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Have a good yeah, time. Yes, thank you. I'll schedule the next one and then we'll see you again. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good weekend.